Hey guys, good morning. So today we are going to see about evidence-based practice. We are starting up with this uh, video for our channel. I am Professor Arunachalam. A major question in front of every physical therapist or a medical practitioner is whether to practice based upon his knowledge and experience and conventional ideas and bookish knowledge or whether to adopt an evidence-based practice was a big debate in 1990s which has branched out to be a great domain which is being educated a lot nowadays and even hyped a lot I would say um, so today we are going to see what is evidence-based practice and how to adopt an evidence-based practice in a very small nutshell uh, in a very interesting manner so when it comes to evidence-based practice you have three domains which has to be taken into consideration on a survey which was conducted by a renowned physical therapist from UK uh, in National Health Services it was found out that the knowledge about evidence-based practice for physiotherapists who are living in and around London um, was not that bright most of them said what is evidence-based practice means they said it is all about research practicing research practicing results of the research or practicing scientifically but they didn't have answer how to practice scientifically very few people came up with an answer where they attested three main domains of evidence-based practice as mentioned here so going by that the knowledge levels of physical therapist about evidence-based practice is very centric towards considering only the research evidences which is published in PubMed and other databases are the original evidence-based practice but it is not true it is in fact a part of three main considerations what evidence-based practice does the first is the individual clinical expertise apart from the external evidences which are built up by systematic research the individual clinical expertise is a very important thing because a physiotherapist might have tasted success by means of certain strategy he might have come across lots of barriers lot of problem in differential diagnosis with experience he might analyze and come up with answers for most of the research questions so that is the power of experience so combining this with the external evidences available and the third very important thing is giving patient values and expectations a uh, due consideration is very important thing because I always ask my patients what do you expect from this session of therapy or the current course of physical therapy of course every patient would like to uh, have their pain vanishing in matter of day or so or any people would like to restore their pre-morbidity they would like to continue with their activities of daily living from day one but this is not going to be happening in most of the cases except few so we should know what a patient expects from a physical therapist and what are the priorities in doing so most of the patients with paralysis would say I would like to go for my toileting activities which is their priority so likewise you would know what is the priority of the patient and what he expects from the physiotherapist and do he really know the limitations of the physical therapist so these are very important criteria which determines whether I am practicing evidence based practice or not in physical therapy or medicine or whatever field it is so these three domains have to be taken into consideration and in formulating a research five major steps are there whether I should go for research or not is determined when I undergo this five consecutive steps conventionally if you see in the field of physical therapy nowadays I don't want to comment on the other uh, fields because I am not aware of that um, in the field of physical therapy nowadays the research is being carried on for the purpose of uh, fulfilling a course requirement particularly the undergraduation post graduation or even PhD for this say uh, for this instance uh, for the completion of a course or it is used for publication to increasing the number of publications uh, 
in the process of doing so you may lose the quality and you may repeatedly analyze a same question which already has a lot of answers in the past so what we are trying to do is we are duplicating things so how not to duplicate things is what is discussed in this slide first is formulating an answerable question so how this question arises is when you discuss with your seniors when you discuss uh, with your patients or in the process of practicing with clinical experience you may come across with certain questions in your mind which do not have an easy answer for that so those questions are the nucleus or the seeds for your future research so you have to collect such question and select a question and find what is the best available evidence for this particular question to answer this question so this stage is called acquiring information or literature survey to know whether already this question has spurred up in somebody's mind and he has come up with an answer for this or not by means of a systematic research if yes available for my uh, question there are some answers available so I'm going to collect all these answers and put it across on a table and the next stage is I am going to apprise which answers are of good quality which are done with good quantity of subjects in a good controlled ambience so this third stage is called as appraisal stage where I'm going to apprise whatever the evidence is what I have uh, come across in the second process and once I have apprised everything whichever is of high quality uh, evidences which are available I'm going to apply them on my patients there is a fourth stage apply the available evidence on my patients and after the application successfully completed the fifth stage is I'm going to audit whether the patient has shown a better improvement or not whether my question is answered or not if this acquired information gives a proper answer to my question there ends the question and answer session this will not further go to a research process in case if my question is not answered then this becomes a future research so simple and so smooth example if my question is whether a mixture of aerobic and anaerobic exercises will give a better weight reduction for obesity okay this is my question I'm not sure whether this combination is going to help or not this is for example sake I'm going to acquire all the information about what is obesity what are the current treatments available for obesity what are the physical therapy uh, modalities available for obesity and what are the outcome measures and gadgets used to quantify the uh, obesity all these things I'm going to collect and I'm, I'm going to apprise which is the best intervention so far which is very recent which is updated and which is done with good quantity and quality of research work apprising that if I come across a protocol for uh, this aerobic and anaerobic obesity I have, co I have come across a um, protocol devised by certain group so I'm going to implement that protocol onto my patient in the fourth stage and I'm going to wait for the results to show up after three months maybe uh, that is what the protocol says you have to wait up to three months then I'll wait up to three months and audit my results if I find the patients have reduced their weight then I'll start applying this particular thing in my evidence-based practice in case if it does not show any results or whether the results are not able to be generalized to every population then there comes my research question uh, that whether this particular set of exercise is going to help obesity really or not from here on I'll take up my research question and proceed with my research thank you